We have already seen the main idea of estimability and the Gauss Markov theorem in the last lecture. There we saw that certain combinations of the unknown parameters can be estimated uniquely even though all the parameters cannot be solved for uniquely. And you have also seen that the theorem due to Gauss and Markov helps us in this respect. Now, we shall see some deeper implications of the same result. Estimability Gauss Markov theorem part 2. In theory, the general linear model is expressed in the following form y equal to x beta plus epsilon, where y is a column vector of the dependent variable, x is a matrix of independent variables, includes the column of 1s for the intercepts, beta is a vector of parameters and epsilon is a vector of errors. x is called the design matrix of independent variables, including the column of 1s for the intercept. In the linear model, we have seen the vector of parameters beta, which we wish to estimate using the observed values of the dependent variable y. A function of the parameters beta is called an estimable function if there exists a vector t transpose equal to t1 to tn transpose such that expectation of t transpose y equal to c transpose beta. That is, there is a linear function of y whose expectation is c transpose beta. Remark 1. No inference can be made about the parametric functions which are not estimable and they are said to be confounded. Some of the students of linear models are also confounded <coughs> with this result. Point 2. If x is full rank, then every linear function of beta is estimator. 3. If c transpose beta is estimable, then c transpose h equal to c transpose, where h is equal to a complicated object. Distributional properties. Let the linear model be written as y equal to x beta plus epsilon, where epsilon follows normal 0 sigma square i. Here i is the identity matrix. Thus, this means that epsilon i's are actually i i d normal 0 sigma square. Here we have written y with a capital notation. Sometimes we also write it using a lower case notation. Let beta naught be x transpose x g inverse x transpose y be a solution to the normal equations, where x transpose x g inverse is a g inverse of x transpose x. Then a beta naught follows normal with a very complicated mean and even more complicated covariance term. The covariance term is sigma square x transpose x g inverse x transpose x x transpose x g inverse and the mean term is x transpose x g inverse x transpose x beta. Let the linear model be written as y equal to x beta plus epsilon where epsilon follows normal 0 sigma square i. B beta naught is independent of SSE where SSE is y transpose i minus x into something into x transpose into y. That is y transpose into i minus p into y. What is p? p is whatever is needed to make this equation true. C. SSE divided by sigma square follows chi square n minus r where obviously r is the rank of x. Confidence interval for estimable functions. If c transpose beta is estimable, then c transpose beta naught. If c transpose beta is estimable, then c transpose beta naught is the blue of c transpose beta. 
here blue does not refer to the color of the sky blue refers to a complicated statistical concept that I am not going to explain here we will learn it in some other module further C transpose beta naught follows normal C transpose beta sigma square C transpose x transpose x g inverse C. Now, of course, you can easily understand that C transpose beta naught minus C transpose beta that follows T n minus P if you divide it with something very complicated like sigma hat square root of a big thing. Hence, 100 into 1 minus alpha percentage confidence interval for C prime beta is C transpose beta prime minus plus T alpha by 2 n minus P sigma hat square root of the same complicated thing. Here, observe that we first write C transpose and later we write an underline under C lower case all these things are used interchangeably in the lecture slide. A result if k transpose beta is not estimable then S S E H naught equals S S E rank of k transpose equals S proof if k transpose beta is not estimable then k transpose beta is not in column space of x transpose which of course we know is column space of x transpose x that is column space of k intersection column space of x transpose x that is just the trivial singleton set consisting of the 0 vector. Let h be x transpose x g inverse x transpose x then rank of k transpose i minus h equals rank of i minus h transpose k which is of course, S suppose not then there exists a linear combination of the columns of I minus H transpose K which is 0 that is I minus H transpose K A equal to 0 for some A not equal to 0, but I minus H transpose K A is equal to 0 K A is equal to H transpose K A that is K A equal to X transpose X x transpose x minus k a which is equal to 0. Since x transpose x into x transpose x g inverse belongs to mu of x transpose x and k a belongs to mu of k. Of course, we have not introduced the notation mu, but that does not matter. I think you can understand it from the context that mu means something very important here. Hence, k a equal to 0 implies a equal to 0 since rank of k equals s which is full rank, but a is not equal to 0. So, we get a contradiction. Now, consider s s e equal to minimum with respect to beta of y minus x beta whole prime y minus x beta. The normal equations are given by x prime x beta equal to x prime y. S S E of H naught equal to minimum with respect to beta of y minus x beta prime y minus x beta subject to k prime beta equal to m. Now, S S E equal to S S E H naught. If we can show that there exists beta naught such that x transpose x beta naught equal to x transpose y and beta naught also satisfies k transpose beta naught equal to m. Consider the general solution for x transpose x beta equal to x transpose y as beta naught equal to something very very complicated which is given as sum of two things. One is a g inverse times x prime y and the other thing is i minus g inverse x transpose x z comma z belongs to R t beta naught equal to i minus h z plus x transpose x minus x transpose y where h is the same complicated thing that we had seen earlier with 
an extra unmatched parenthesis at the end. We need to choose a z such that k transpose beta naught is m that is k transpose x transpose x minus x transpose y plus k transpose i minus h z equal to m or k transpose i minus h z equal to n minus l prime x prime x minus x prime y which is equal to obviously m star such as it exists. Now to show let a equal to k prime i minus h and let a be a 1 colon a 2 such that a 1 is non singular. Then a z equal to a 1 a 2 times z 1 z 2 equal to a 1 z 1 plus a 2 z 2 equal to m star set z 2 equal to 0 and z 1 equal to a 1 inverse m star thus z is z 1 z 2 a 1 inverse m star 0 the condition k prime beta naught equal to 0 hence we have proved whatever we were trying to prove theorem 2. Now we come to Gauss Markov theorem under the model y equal to x beta plus epsilon where expectation of epsilon is 0 and variance of epsilon equal to sigma square i n. If c transpose beta is estimable then c transpose beta hat has minimum variance in the class of linear unbiased estimator of c transpose beta. This is what we had earlier called blue based linear unbiased estimator. It also happens to be the name of a color. Proof since c transpose beta is estimable c transpose belongs to r of x equal to r of x transpose x that is c equal to x transpose x lambda for some lambda. Hence c transpose beta equals lambda transpose x transpose x beta hat equal to lambda transpose x transpose y. If L prime y is any unbiased estimator of c transpose beta then L prime x equal to c prime. You have noticed that we are stating a result on blue hence the theorem is also written in the blue color. Now variance of L transpose y equals variance of L transpose y minus 1 term plus lambda prime x transpose y equal to variance of L transpose y minus variance of lambda transpose x transpose y equal to the next line plus variance of C transpose beta where covariance between the two terms is something the only problem is we can define covariance for two terms here it appears that we are defining it for a single term this is because of a missing comma. So the answer is L transpose minus lambda transpose x transpose covariance of y y x lambda equal to sigma square into a quantity inside basis equal to sigma square times another quantity inside basis eventually everything cancels out and we get the answer 0. So variance of L transpose y is greater than or equal to variance of C transpose beta hat. So we call C transpose beta hat the blue of C transpose beta. Theorem 3 all linear parametric functions are estimable if and only if rank of x equals p the number of unknown parameters beta j proof if rank of x is p then beta with tilde and hat coming before it is unique and all linear parametric functions are estimable. Since expectation of c a complicated symbol followed by beta that symbol here means a tilde together with a hat equals c tilde prime expectation of beta just follow the steps as written where c prime expectation of the quantity inside basis then 
something without any basis, finally it becomes C tilde prime beta tilde. If C transpose beta is a stimulus, then C transpose is in R of x, which is R of x transpose x for all C. Since C is arbitrary, rank of x transpose x equals rank of x equal to P, full rank. Remark, if rank of x is less than P, then some parametric functions do not admit unbiased estimators. And under our setup, nothing can be inferred about such parametric functions. If rank of x is greater than p, then you have you can guess that something has been done wrongly. For any estimable function capital psi equal to c prime beta, its unique minimum variance unbiased estimator linear is c prime beta hat whose expression and structure are given by theorems we have done already. If psi 1, psi 2, psi q are estimable, then every linear combination psi equal to summation h i psi i is estimable. With this lecture, we finish the very important concept of estimability and we have also seen the application of Gauss-Markov theorem in estimating the various parameters in a linear model. Why? For a practicing statistician, this theorem may not look very appealing, but we must not forget that when we interpret the output of a computer program, that interpretation crucially depends on whatever we have learned in this as well as the preceding module. In the next few modules, we are going to take a look at more practical examples.